Confession. First time I came to Brussels, I left very unimpressed. But now that I've been living in Belgium and have been to Brussels more, I can say there are a lot of cool things here and Brussels has really grown on me. So Kat and I are going to show you a few things that are a bit touristy and then some things that are a bit on the hidden track. So stick with us, we're gonna make you fall in love with Brussels. So we are now talking, talking. We are now walking and talking. Uh, we are immediately uh, greeted by a bunch of Smurfs. I'm going to show you. First stop, the main square. We are right now at the Grote Markt, also known as the Grand Market, the Grand, the Grand Place, <laughs> the main square. The main square, yes. And it's beautiful as ever. Not too many people because it's only 10-ish o'clock. Yeah, that's, so, a, that's a tip because it's going to get super busy. It's one of the main places that people are told to check out when in Brussels. Here in Brussels, waffles come in all shapes and sizes. And I mean all shapes and sizes. Anything you can imagine, you'll find it here. Behind us, Squint, or you might miss it, is one of the most famous things in Brussels, and that is the Man of the Peace, which is this little boy who is taking the piss. We're going to get some coffee, because it's early in the morning. Yes, and way we... too early. For... Yes. What time do you normally get up on the weekend? Mm, I wouldn't be up yet. Me neither. <laughs> So we need coffee. <laughs> we found a cozy cafe that serves Australian inspired food and great coffee. Luckily we didn't have to wait to be seated, but this place is quite trendy and we barely avoided standing in a long queue. Alright, we are about to show you the most iconic view of Brussels. It's <laughs> This is actually probably my favorite place in Brussels. Even though it's very touristy, uh, it is very close to the train station, so easy to find. Yes. But it's just so beautiful, like a, you know, like a very beautiful garden. Yeah, and there's tons of people around, but it doesn't even feel like it. It still feels slightly secluded and still very picturesque and like you're within nature in the city. Yeah, it's super cute. I love it. Gallery Ravenstein is a shopping center and, though not as lively on the weekends, it is a pretty Instagrammable public space. Check out that ceiling! Right now we are at the park, beautiful Brussels park, which is very close to the Royal Palace that we will show you from the outside. So this park has plenty of uh, little cute corners and benches where you can sit, relax, read a book, or grab a drink from one of the outdoorsy bars that are here. There's one right here called Woodpecker, and there's another one called Kiosk Radio Bar. <laughs> so the Royal Palace is not a must-see because well, it's, you, you can't. Here you can't. Here you can't. It's it's closed to the public for most of the year. But if you're Already here, uh, you can just take a look. We we're just about to go inside the comic book art museum. Maybe you're thinking, uh, comics not really my thing, but you're going to be pleasantly surprised because it's not just about the art, it's also about the architecture. Oh, the building is just gorgeous. It is actually um, designed by Porta, who is a very famous architect. So you should definitely check it out if you're around. And if you do like art, right next door as well, there is a free museum celebrating Belgian artist Mark Sleen. The museum has different rooms with both permanent and temporary exhibitions. And of course, you cannot escape the Smurfs, because their country of origin is Belgium. They are everywhere. The gallery is dedicated to the works which constitute the present-day form of the comic strip. 
There is even an interactive AR app to accompany you on your adventure. If you're a comic strip geek, you should pencil in a visit in your calendar. Now we are at the Botanic Gardens of Brussels. Which is definitely worth a walk. If you don't have the time to visit this one, then go to the uh, one we showed you previously. But this one is, is definitely much nicer and much more exotic. It's a botanical garden. And we're very thirsty because it is now afternoon. It's very warm. We're going to grab a beer. Yeah. Just a few minutes walk from the botanical garden, we found Urban Picnic, an indoor space inside a restaurant with a terrace, where we enjoyed our well-deserved beer. Now we're about to show you something super cute. It is getting more and more known, but it's still a pretty well-hidden gem. If you've watched our video about a day in Antwerp, which you should, we'll link it up in the corner. Uh, but it kind of reminds me of the Lakensgang, but it's a little uh, quieter here. It's, I think it's lesser known. So. Yeah, so it's check perfect. it out, but shh, keep it a secret. St. Catherine's Square, always lively, always filled with locals. Plenty of great pubs and bars and restaurants here. Never a dull moment. So definitely check it out because uh, it's pretty much in the center. And, yeah. Yeah. and also check out these fountains. They're ridiculous. They're ridiculous. Have a look. Place saint jacques which is another square that is very lively. Uh, all the locals come here, uh, very close to the station and to the center. Nike, just, just do your best. <laughs> Check out this beautiful oasis tucked away inside the previous institute's Pacheco where we admired the beautiful hidden garden with beer on tap and live music. So this morning we showed you the Manicapis. This is the Xenicapis. Yes, it is his lesser known but slightly bigger canine counterpart. <laughs> and there's also a female called the Janica Piss, so yes. we'll, we'll complete the Piss collection. Indeed. And, uh, and you'll see all of the statues here in Brussels. We are now uh, next to the stock exchange. This street actually used to be filled with cars. And only a few years ago, the city decided to make it more people friendly or less car friendly, I guess. The Royal Puppet Theatre Tune is one of the most weird and wonderful bars in Brussels. Most of the time, it's just your typical bar. If your typical bar has marionettes hanging from the ceiling. It's Monica Pills. The fourth part of the installment. <laughs> The Manica Piss, the Janica Piss, the Janica Piss, and the Manica Pills. Cheers. Thursday through Saturday, they also put on traditional puppet shows. The magnificent Royal Gallery of St. Hubert, one of the first shopping arcades built in Europe, is right in the heart of Brussels and a must see. We're going to show you one of Kat's favorite things inside this area as well, and it is a bookstore. Yes. She's in there. Yes, she is. The Royal Gallery is beautiful at night, but our last stop has to be the most beautiful of them all. We're taking you back to the Grotemarkt, because if you thought it was stunning during the day, then oh boy, you're really in for a treat now. So 
So after a full day in Brussels, uh, we are going back home now. We are completely Brussels out. It was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So hopefully you guys like it more than uh, just a stereotypical trip to Brussels. And we hope to see you guys in the next video. Please like and subscribe. Or don't. We don't care. We care a little. Are you nagging our audience?